Tonight we're featuring Carnelian, Lepidolite under the microscope cam, Vending Machine Brownie on Why'd I Buy That, 10 New Jokes, and Hot Grinding Action. My girlfriend broke up with me. I guess I'm finally one of the X-Men. Let's start the show. Carnelian. It's basically a form of quartz. It's orange chalcedony without the chalcedony bands. It's like super intense orange. A lot of rust. A lot of ferric iron. Might have that mixed up with ferrous iron. I think ferrous is black and ferric is red. Let's look that up. We'll find out in real time. Scrapping, hoarding, tinkering fun. Evening, Downey. Mr. D Mr. Downey, how are you? Welcome to the show. Jeffrey Allen. Let's make you uh, blue. Okay. Jacob, here. How are you doing, Jacob? I am doing fine. Oh, do you two know each other? Scrapping, hoarding, tinkering fun involves his stream in scrapping, hoarding, tinkering, and, yes, that's right, fun. He also does giveaways and all kinds of neat projects. And Down River Mining and Lapidary by Jeffrey shapes opal as well as other things he was featuring some ocean jasper ocean jasper right or is it a different kind of jasper one of those types of things that's the end of that one okay so i was actually shaping that on a rough old hundred grit lap no 60 grit that's right that's an old 60 grit that's worn and it kind of cuts like a hundred grit. It cuts like a decent hundred grit. It used to cut like a new hundred grit for a while. And when it was brand new, that thing ate stones apart. I'm afraid to actually get a new 60 grit because it's, it's rougher than a saw blade. I mean, there's like chips and stuff that are hitting me in the face. Stony Creek. Jasper. Of course. Of course. Hello, Down River Mining. Usually, I, I usually catch the replay. Ah, I'm glad you made it here. Yeah, I'm glad you actually made it to the show. You were able to take part in the poll. You can decide what we're going to do with the poll. Are we going to use it to pick a president? Or are we going to use it to pick a nose? Where's the next video? 
I think the next video I actually broke out my new 100 grit. No, not chips for betting. Although that would be interesting. To be at a casino. So wealthy. The chips are made from gemstones. If the chips actually had gemstones in them. Chips and more gem cutting. Eating chips like potato chips or corn chips or okra chips. Those are probably a thing. If Chris was here, we could ask him. He grows okra. At this point, I had ground down the outside and taken a look at what was left on the inside. Just to see if we could get a nice even orange color out of the final gem. And I'm trying to decide in the video there what the final shape is going to be. Am I going to do a triangle? Am I going to do like a, like a raindrop? Am I going to do something a little more even? I wanted something that was even. And then I was like, you know what? We're going to do the bean style. It's going to be like a banana chips. There you go. Yeah, somebody's on top of things. Wouldn't that be funny if you go into the casino and you start betting with banana chips? Hey, they're chips, aren't they? Let's pull out the microscope cam. Give you a little view of the carnelian under the scope of cam. How you guys doing tonight? How you guys doing this week? How you guys gonna do this coming week? The answer is fantastic for Lee. Or some derivative thereof. Bling! Because you're awesome. That's you. You're great. Alright. Yeah. Let's get to the microscope can. Colette S. Colette, I've got some lapidolite to show under the microscope. Which is cool because I'm going to send you some lapidolite. This is cool stuff. Bloom. Look at all that character in it. But then also on this side, it's got a nice evenness. Kind of for the most part. That's why I, actually why I wanted to show it under the microscope cam. Is so we could take a look at it. Also, here's the feature piece. Boom. Boom. The piece that's being worked on up yonder bear. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool, right? Boom. I like it. I'm pretty happy with this piece of carnelian. Carnelian. Let's get the old Whatchama fired up, shall we? <laughs> you know, I gotta say that casinos, in their best interest, should make chips edible. They would probably lose a lot more chips and not have to pay for them. People would get hungry, they would snack on the chips. Next thing they're buying more chips. It'd be an expensive way to bet. Okay, that's there. We need to go to the desktop. Camera software. At least I got it plugged in this time. Bingo. There she is. There's the shininess. Yep, just 
just gonna have to grab it in real time. Okay, there we go. I really like how well the orange is spread across the top of this guy. So if I flip it over, you can see a little bit more of the character and unevenness, but for the most part I ground it out. I got rid of it. I got rid of all those little problems in and amongst the stone. Which left us with a nice amount of orange and I got a good little 45 going on on the back there which really kind of shakes around all the light that's inside of it and leaves us with the lovely orange spread evenly evenly throughout the stone Left me happy with it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this gem. I like it. Ooh, is that it? We're done with that video? Yep, that was... That was the hundred fresh 100 grit, right? Yes. That was my... Fresh 100 grit. And then I wound up getting it the basic shape I wanted. And then... What we did... Is we shaped it with a 240 grit. Before hitting it with a 1000 grit. I gotta find the video first. Which is right up about here beam so yeah there I had I had the basic idea of what I was going to do but I had to kind of work it down and make sure it was going to keep the gist of what it had going on oh uh, let's see let's let's show that so, at this point, one end is a little roundier, and the other end is flatter. And this flatter end has more of a dive on it. So I had to decide at that point a second time, am I going to try and roundy this end by taking these quarters off? Or am I going to try and flatten this out and then even up to this dive right here this this part that goes down on both sides and I wound up kind of going for a little bit of both it's actually a little bit of both oh am I sticking with the hundred yeah probably this carnelian is so hard I don't know if you noticed in the last video or not, but there was a lot of sparks. A lot of sparks of flying. You'd think we'd call this stone Mr. Sparks a lot. Such a pain to cut if you don't have any wheels under 240 grit. Oh man, the Jasper is probably the same too, because the Jasper is, is a, sort of a form of Chalcedony as well, which I've heard that jade is a form of green jasper and there's two different types of jade there's nephrite and maybe the other one's just actually called jade i'm gonna look that up <laughs> jade, nephrite, or jadeite. Mm -hmm. And nephrite is kind of soft and whitish. And jadeite is really hard. It is a form of green jasper.
Glad we cleared that up. I actually have some jade. I have a little bit of each nephrite and um, jadeite. We should do some of that. Because the jadeite is kind of like this orange piece, but with like a green. So it's a nice, lovely, lovely greenfulness. Okay, what do we got for the lapidolite? Because I wanted to show you this piece, which is pretty close to being done, and I think I might actually feature it next. It's got like this starry field. It's fairly even. It's got a little bit of a crack going on there. But for the most part, there's no cracks, no general problems. It's a pretty even playing field of lapidolite. Need to clean up the edges a little bit. Then we flip it over and you can see like we've got these cracks over here. Got this big old chunk that looks like it's going to fly off the corner. It's not all, all even. The fact that we have a nice even surface kind of makes for a nice little gem, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it. I don't know. I need to I need to finish polishing it. Let's look at a little bit of the unpolished lapidolite under the scope of cam. This is what I cut it from. This thing or here. Just narped it right off. But see there's this crack going on here. All throughout here. What I did is I put some water on this. And then I picked an area, that square area, that rectangular area, and that's what I cut out. And we'll actually look at that a little bit closer when we feature this lapidolite bar, which is kind of a form of uh, amethyst colored granite, sort of. But there's actually a lot of lithium in it. Apparently lapidolite is one of the leading sources of lithium. It's like the second most popular source of lithium on the planet. What do we got that we're also going to look at? Maybe, maybe this piece of celestite. It's so beat up though. It's so hard to, it's so hard to shape celestite. It's so soft. It just busts right out. I did feature it once. I tried to feature it a couple more times, but I couldn't get the gem finished. But this thing's big, and it's in fairly of a rough gem shape already. It's hard to say what kind of cracks are down in there. So I'm going to shape on that. I got a piece of... We'll pick tanzanite somewhere. Um... I was thinking something green, maybe, but we just did something green last week with the malachite. It'd be nice to do something purple. So, real quick, maybe we'll do this piece of amethyst with the three bars in it. Boom, boom, boom. Or maybe this piece of amethyst here. If I can figure out how to finish it. Not sure how to finish this guy without losing a whole bunch of it. Notice this guy's got three zones I kind of like the zones being in there so I'm thinking about just polishing this up as is and going with it might do that probably gonna do that and then there's this guy which has a really nice purple amount but I'm not sure about the final shape see how it's got this big edge here so I might wind up nipping that off not sure. Oh, there's where it, I lost it. I dropped it. This guy was a slippery little stone. I want to say I dropped it like twice. Maybe three times. This is where I had to go and actually get it. Kiwi Claw, DHA, how are you doing tonight? Glad you came by. Glad you were able to make it to the show. Hope you're ready to have a great week. Polished to 200,000 grit. The Stony Creek Jasper is okay to cut. Okay, gotcha. That's um, 7 to 6 on the Mohs scale. Yeah, that's not too bad. 
I mean, this car cardelian is not supposed to be that hard, but gee whiz, man, is it hard. Jade is a pain to cut, and they say six to seven nephrite and jadeite. Okay, so there's but they're both supposed to be hard, but I thought that the nephrite was softer. Maybe it just looks softer. That's probably what I'm thinking, is it just looks a lot softer. Playing Borderlands 2 on my stream deck. Steam deck. Steam stream. It's a stream of steam. Right into your eyeballs. That's what he's talking about. It's a steam deck, which is basically, it's like, you know how Game Boy was like, buttons on the bottom, screen on the top? And then Sega had the screen in the middle, buttons on the side. And now the cell phone's got those clip-on things. And I think there's a Nintendo, something like that. And then this thing's like a huge, like, long screen with buttons on the side. And it's like the size of an arm. And it's really thin. It's like, it's not big and th it's really thin. It's like a cell phone, but it's the size of your arm. And he's playing games on it. Not calling people. I, I actually told him that would be a funny picture to, you know, have this thing the size of an extra long shoe right up there next to your head. Hello! I can't hear you. We probably need to make that into a meme, Kiwi. Nephrite is six to six and a half. Jadeite is six and a half to seven. Okay, so it is a, there is a little bit of a difference. I mean, when you consider it, if you've got one on one end and one on the other end, six to seven, and if you think about the hardness being, you know, 60% versus 70%, that's a 10% difference. Or, if it's 60 to 70, that's more of a 12.5% difference. That's a, that's a reasonable difference in hardness, I will say. Oh. Where are we at with the video? So this is the 240 grit. I th Maybe this is the 100 grit still. Excuse me. And it's got such a rough surface. I wound up putting it on my worn 1000 grit. I didn't want to eat anything away. I just wanted to give it a nice polished surface. And so I wound up putting it on my worn 1000 to smooth it over. Which I think is the entire next video. But mostly I was just trying to get all the surfaces evened out without eating too much of it away. And that's what most of this video is. That plus me talking about it. Let's see what else we got. Why'd I buy that? Yeah, this is a rest stop. Glad I'm not the only one that can't hold on to them. Oh, man. And, you know, that's the funny part, Jeffrey, is that I've got... I've got jokes that I used to make about my eagle claw. Grip them stones, baby. I can... I can, uh... I can, I can claw a fish from an eagle. I can grab the chopsticks from a kung fu master. I can grab space from time. But I can't hold on to the blasted gemstone. Galder. Yeah, and, I, and the thing is, it gets pinched in there and it flies up and then I've got this light like this and it flies up and it hits the light at different angles. And then it goes that way, it goes that way, it goes over the top and out that direction. It go I mean, I still have an amethyst, beautiful amethyst. I actually finished it on the faceter, and then I decided, you know what? It needs some bigger edge facets, so I wanted to fix it up real quick. It's for Chicha B. I got a whole bunch of gems, plus this amethyst that I was going to send to her, and then... Can't leave well enough alone. I'm on the last one facet. And I lost it. Like six months ago and I still haven't found it. But I'm hopeful. 
Because I've had gems that I've had lost for six months or better. I had one that I lost one Christmas, found it the next Christmas. In the Christmas decorations. Like, not in them, but in amongst them. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that uh, I'm going to find that gem. Yeah. Otherwise, I might just, you know, finish up one of these other amethyst and send that. But the point is, I lose the gems. And sometimes I find them. You know what else I do lose is my appetite. But then I find my appetite hits me when I'm on the road. So I stop up here. I'm checking out the uh, rest stop area. How's it going, Earth Creeper? Cheers, and welcome to the show. Ooh, is that a sunflower? That looks like quite the sunflower. That's pretty tall. I don't know, it also kind of looks like a peacock with a yellow head climbing up a pole. Or maybe a really giant bug. And all those leaves are the scales on its back. Or maybe it's a fish, and the sunflower is an eye on the fish. And it's a fish that you caught, and you're holding it up. Except you got to use one of those cranes to hold it up, because it's about the size of a Jaws. I don't know. Could be any one of those things. Maybe it's a sunflower fish. You know what I saw at this vending machine was sunflower seeds. I think. Maybe I didn't. There are actually two vending machines there. True story. They both had a cosmic brownie in them. One of them was two fifty. The other one was a dollar fifty. Not sure what the deal is on that. It's got me wondering, like, is one of the vending machines owned by a different company? I can't imagine that. They're probably all owned by the same vending machine company. Vending machine person. Stocking machine person. I don't know. Actually, side story, I saw on Facebook there was a vending machine company for sale. And I want to say they had, like, three vending machines... And they were selling the company for like 10 grand, which is like, okay, three vending machines plus the spot. How, like, how long is it going to take you to get 10 grand back in vending machine food? Because that's another thing. It's like expensive vending machine food doesn't really sell. And it's, I mean, it's got a lot of preservative in it. But at the same time, it, it doesn't have a really big rollover. So it's like, how long to get back 10? I mean, dropped it again. At least it didn't go flying that time. Sheesh. You know, the worst part is when I drop it and it gets caught. And then the, the, the wheel is grinding a funny spot into it. And I'm trying to shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down now. And uh, then it winds up giving me this weird zone that I got to grind out. But that didn't happen. Thumbs up, because it did not happen. How's it going, Benny Loco? Glad you made it. Just in time to find out. Why did I buy that? Actually, this was a hard why did I buy that. Because this time in particular that I took these pictures, I did not buy that. I usually, what I do is I'll go to the vending machine and I'll just look at them. And I'm like, ooh, I'm old enough now. I can operate the vending machine and my wallet. I can get one of these thingies. Yeah. And then I'm like looking at all the stuff and I'm like, but it all tastes like wax nowadays. It doesn't taste as good as, good as it did back in the day. It doesn't taste as sugary anymore. So I, I have tr so much trouble deciding, and then I just don't pick anything. And they, like, they've got the chips in the top. They've got the big, you know, like, like pastry things in the bottom that always taste like preservatives and don't have a whole lot of fruit filling. Then they got the candy bars. Then they got, you know, the oddball things like Pop-Tarts and these, you know, R Rice Krispie Treats. And then they got, like, nutty bars that aren't actual nutty bars. Um, we got one more video, one more, and some jokes. Didn't have a lot of jokes this week. 
Didn't actually write a whole lot of headlines this week because I didn't go to the comedy club this week. Getting ready for the comedy tournament this Thursday. And then the comedy benefit on the following day, Friday. Okay, so here, notice these little gritty lines up at the top. Those are left over from the 100 grit. And then this smooth area, that's the 240 grit. The worn 240 versus the fresh 100. That shows you the difference in what it does in terms of damaging the stone. Ah, so I was actually trying to grind out those little lines because they leave those white marks on the front of the stone and the back of the stone and the side of the stone. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? See the little white marks here, white marks here, white marks down here. That's that 100 grit leftover scratches. It did a good job shaping it up quick. Got it right up to the shape that I was hoping for. But then I got to grind all those out. So that's why we put it on the 1000 grit. Then I finished it on my desktop with a 2000 grit cerium oxide. Got it that nice polish that you see before you, or saw before you, back when it. up there in the corner. Okay, so, anyways, when it comes to the vending machine, I usually go with something chocolate. At least. The chocolate kind of helps to get around the waxiness of the taste. Also, chocolate. Chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. Chocolate. Mmm. Stop. Okay, I'll get stuck in that. Anyways, I was like, brownie, chocolate. It's got that layer of icing on it. I don't even really want the cake part. I just want the icing. Wouldn't that be nice if, if I could just buy like a, you know, an 8x10 blanket of chocolate icing? That's what I want. That's what, if, if I saw that in the vending machine, that would be what I bought. And the reason why is chocolate. Anyways, the price wasn't, the price is outrageous. $1.50 for a brownie. But it is on the road, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, and it's chocolate. So that's what I bought, and that's why I buy that. Have you ever bought a brownie from a vending machine? And which one did you buy? And why did you buy that? Probably because it was chocolate, right? Of course. That's what everybody does. Because it's chocolate. Use cerium on the carnelian. Yes. Yeah, it actually it, it did pretty good. Um, usually cerium oxide works great with quartzes, and carnelian is a sort of a quartziness. I'm good, thanks. As for Kiwi Baby, last time I saw her, she was well. Oh, that's good. How's, how's our friend Tamsi Kiwi? Okay, she's doing good. I thought you were talking about Kiwi Claw, playing on his Steam Stream. Vending machines make mad money. I was wondering about that scrapping. But the thing is, and I love you because I, I say these things too. There is no mad button on my calculator. If there were, it would probably be pushed way too often. I need actual numbers so I know how much mad money is. In order to be able to... Because, I mean, mad money... Okay, that's great, but 10 grand, that's mad money too. I mean, we're talking about, like, you've got to put forth hours in the day, plus maintenance when they break down, plus people calling being like, hey, it took my dollar, and, you know, so then you got to send them a dollar in the mail and that kind of stuff. So it's like, do they actually make an... I mean, how long, in terms of months and or years, would it take to recoup that? Sure, you get the vending machine, so you got the equity, and then you can sell the business if you still have the vending machine locations. But that's all stuff you got to think about. Rand brought home Twinkies today. They used to be three-finger Twinkies. 
Now there are only two finger Twinkies? Aww. Shrinkflation, man. That's the thing. They used to be good, and then they started putting all that carnauba in them, all that wax, just to make them shiny. And it's like, I can eat I can eat wax if I just buy wax lips. What I want is to not have wax lips. I want sugar. I want that nuclear sugar. Sounds like going to Indianapolis via train, $6 a soda. Ooh-wee. Snickers bar. Ah, Colette would go for the Snickers bar. I use cerium oxide on most opals. The Matrix opal does not get cerium oxide, though. Okay, that's good to know because I've actually got that opal that I'm working on for Colette. Where, where is the microscopic cam? Boop. Yeah. This is the opal that I've been processing. That That's all uh, hot glue right there. This is the opal I've been processing for Colette's ring. Just trying to grind out some of the matrix to make sure I can cut out a nice area. Something that'll work for the ring. So far, so good. I think I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Because I can't get this middle area out. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it. But we'll do that sometime this week. And we'll feature, we'll show that under the microscope. Hopefully, again next week. And we'll have some progress. What do I got for jokes for you guys? Before I send you on your way. Your lovely, beautiful, awesome way. I tend to eat around the potatoes in the potato salad. Because potatoes are a vegetable. You can't fool me. Which reminds me, which vegetable likes to rhyme and sing? Rap scallions. Because a, a scallion, I thought a scallion was a type of like seafood, but it's actually a, a type of onion. Airline, oh, um, let's see. We'll do this backwards. And sorry, I did not finish this one out. I was just thinking about how sometimes pills can be frustrating. You get so frustrated with taking medicine and all these different pills, you just go to the window and just throw all the pills out the window. But the birds will think they're breadcrumbs and fly in and start taking the pills. Yeah, it was more of a funny scene than a joke. I thought I could make some money as a prospector, but I'm lazy, so I just bought a golden retriever. The problem is he hasn't retrieved any gold. Just kibble and student loan debt. I want to transition from a poor... I, oh, I want to transition, but not from a man to a woman. I want to transition from a poor man to a rich man. The only problem is I can't afford the operation. Wouldn't that be great if you could just get an operation where they cut out the parts of your brain that make stupid purchases like Bitcoin and NFTs and install like smart parts of your brain that make, make good financial decisions like inventing, inventing Bitcoin and NFTs? Man, that was rough. But you got the basic uh, idea of that joke. Instead of buying them, you got to invent them. It's kind of like with the gold rush. The people who made the money were the people selling picks and axes. Uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. I guess I'm finally one of the X-Men. Not how I wanted to do it. Um, a local bar, uh, barkeeper? No, it's a local baker. A local baker keeps saying, I don't know how to read. Which is true. But the local baker also keeps saying, I look like a thin pancake. It's really creepy. We're almost done. This is a very short joke portion of the week. The airline is charging $100 for a one-way flight. I asked how much for a three-way. She called N uh, TSA. I thought it was a different form of TNA. I don't know how to finish that joke, though. There's supposed to be another punchline, and I actually thought of it, but I think I was going to sleep, and I didn't write it down. 
We'll have to revisit it on next week's show. I'm going to have better jokes next week, I hope. I don't know. It depends, because I've got the tournament and the, the other thing coming up. Maybe next week I'll just do my set list. But I don't want to do it yet, because I actually put together a bunch of my older jokes, you know, the jokes, previous jokes, into a list, and it kind of flows from joke to joke to joke. Trying to get ready for some stage time. What else we got? I think I got two more. Uh, Hillary Clinton has reminded Trump about three key words after the FBI search. Oh, okay. After the FBI search, Hillary Clinton reminded Trump about three key words. Control-Alt-Delete. And apparently... After the airing of a documentary on Hulu, Mike Tyson is still very mad about Hulu's documentary called Mike. Someone's keyboard is about to get punched. Nah, maybe I should say someone's about to punch the keyboard. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like what a lot of people would do. There you go, Mike. Punch your keyboard, man. That's probably not the best way to do it, but it's probably also the best way to do it. That's um, probably the best thing to do after... Wait, where is it? The joke portion of the program. Especially after this week's jokes. So glad you were able to make it to the show. You guys are fantastic. You know you cheer me up, right? Which is why I try to cheer you up. It's kind of like a, a a feed it forward thing. You know, I, I cheer you up, you cheer me up. We kind of feed it forward and get that power going for the week. I used to work for TSA. But they didn't give you enough TNA. TSA always feeling for DNA. I adore your jokes, Jacob. Thank you. I adore your comments, Benny Loco. You guys are so great. Colette S. Down River Mining and Lapidary by Jeffrey. Scrapping Hoarding Tinkering Fun. Kiwi Claw. What do we got? Earth Creeper made it to the show. Lots of fantastic people. All kinds of great and awesome people. Austin even made it to the show this week. All right. I saw Austin was having a... A yard sale. It was yard sale week around here. Because we had the Tug Fest. I should have posted a picture of the Tug Fest. It's, it's, no, it's not that. It's where we have a tug of war across the Mississippi River. Mm hmm. Only by state tug of war in the, in the world, I believe. Yeah. Welcome to the Midwest. So anyways, I think next week we're going to try and feature some Lepidolite. And uh, maybe we'll do some of that Celestite. Either way, we're going to be featuring awesomeness. We're going to be glad that we have such a great audience. And that's why I hope to see you next week and every week at 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a great week, you awesome, fantastic, super amazing people. <laughs>